Hello and welcome students who are taking Math for Business and Finance and Math Applications. Um, we're moving on to the Chapter 6 Word Problems, uh, the odd number problems which were assigned to you in your study guide. So um, we're going to work on the Word Problem 6-53 and it says what percentage of customers in Problem 6-52 did not order coffee? Okay, so that means we have to look at 652, 6-52 and it says at a local Dunkin' Donut, a survey showed that out of 1,200 customers eating lunch, 240 ordered coffee with their meal. Okay, so what that means to me is that I have 1,200 customers who ate lunch, and that out of that, 240 had coffee. Okay, and I can take the 1,200 and minus the 240, and I end up with 0, 06, 960 that did not have coffee. Okay. In figuring out problem 6-52, it says, what percentage of customers ordered coffee? Now remember, there's a relationship between uh, dollars or amounts or whatever have you and their percentage. The 1,200, the 1200 customers represented 100% of the customers. So this portion here, which didn't drink, uh, did not order coffee, the 960, has a percentage and the 240 has a percentage. And we're trying to calculate you know, what percentage actually had the coffee. So to do that, we take the 240 and we divide that by 1200 and that gives us uh, 0.2 and then to convert it into a percentage, we move our decimal place over two places to the right and we end up with 20%. So out of the, for the 240, that's 20% of the 1200 that uh, had coffee. And of course, if I subtract the two, I end up with 80%, which is the percentage of customers, the 960, that did not order coffee, which is part of problem 6-53. Now, I could have done it that way, but um, I could have also figured out that out of the 960, I mean, for the 960 that didn't have coffee, if I divide that by 1200, that would have come out to 0 0.8. And then of course I move the decimal over two places and I end up with 80%, okay? And so that's a, a double check. So I could have done that problem both, you know, two different ways. It all depends upon what was being asked in the problem, okay? Um, and it's also good for a double check because obviously if this portion is 20% and this portion is 80%, it should equal to 100%, which is the 1,200, okay? All right, next problem, 6-55. Uh, Wally Chin, the owner of an ExxonMobil station, bought a used Ford pickup truck, paying 2,000 as a down payment. He still owes 80% of the selling price. What was the selling price of the truck? Okay, so let's, we have, um, we have a selling price and we have a down payment and an amount owed. Okay, let's just call it owed, O for owed. Right, and we know that the down payment is 2000. Okay. And it's telling us that the amount owed is 80%. Well, we know our selling price is going to be 100%. And the difference between the two makes that our down payment, which is 20%. 80 from 100 gives you the 20%. And since we know that our down payment is 2,000, we can take the 2,000 and divide it by the 20%. Now remember the 20%, well, let me do it this way, 20%. I can convert that into 2,000 and make the percentage a decimal. I do that by 
moving my decimal place 2 to the left, so I end up with 0 0.2, and I end up dividing 2,000 by 0 0.2, and that gives me uh, a total amount of $10,000. Okay, so you see how I'm inferring this is going to be 10,000, and of course 10, 8, 10,000 minus uh, 2,000 gives me $8,000 as the amount owed. And that makes sense because, you know, 10,000 is 100%. And if my uh, down payment is 20% of 2,000, then 8,000 has to be the 80%. And I could double check that by taking 8,000 and dividing it by 10,000 and cancel. And then that ends up with being 0 0.8. And of course, I move the decimal over two places and I end up with 80%, okay? So the important thing to, to get out of the last problem and this problem is that there is this relationship between an amount or a dollar amount and a percentage, dollars or amount, and a percentage. Generally, you start out with 100%, and then because if this, is, if this whole thing is 100%, if you divide it up in some way, shape or, form, shape or form, you end up with two parts. And both of those, of course, have to add up to 100%. Um, and you can just see how that equates into actual numbers itself. Okay. Okay, let's see here. Problem 6-57. So... The Social Security Administration announced that the following rates announced the following rates to explain what percentage of your Social Security you will receive based on how old you are when you start receiving your Social Security benefits. Assuming Shelly Kate decided to take your Social Security at the age of 63, what amount of Social Social oh boy I'm having a hard time saying it Social Security money will she receive each month assuming she is entitled to $800 per month? Well, if she's entitled to $800 per month, okay, and at the age of 63, she gets a benefit of 80%, okay, then that means I multiply um, 800 by 80%, so that's 800 times and I convert the 80% into a decimal by moving the decimal place over to so that's 0 0.8 and when I multiply that out that ends up being $640 simple easy okay. without having to be thinking about portions rate and uh, base okay I mean if you want you can use it um, but notice I didn't okay 6-59 Pete Smith found his, in his attic a Woody Woodpecker watch in, an, in its original box. It had a price tag on it for $4.50, and the watch was made in 1949. Pete brought the watch to an antiques dealer and sold it for $35. Okay, so to me, if he bought it, if he had it at $4.50, and he sold it at 35 okay so the difference ends up being thirty dollars and fifty cents that would be his profit okay so what was the percent of increase in the price and round to the nearest hundredth okay okay so remember we have a dollar amount and we also have the percentage as a relationship okay now I'm looking for the percent increase, which means the thirty dollars and fifty cents. So if I take the thirty dollars and fifty cents and I divide it by the four dollars and fifty cents, which is what the price tag was, I end up with uh, let's see here thirty fifty times I'm sorry divided by four fifty. I end up with a decimal of 6.77777 on and on and on. 
And of course, to convert that decimal into a percentage, I move the decimal place over two to the right. So I have 677.777, and it says to round to the nearest hundredth. So this is my hundredth, hundredths place. So I look to the right, seven is greater than five, so I'm going to round up. And I end up with 677.78 as the percentage um, increase. And that makes sense because if I started with four, uh, $4.50, and, uh, $4 and you know, um, six times four is 24, you know, so that's at least 600% in order to get to $30, okay? It's almost seven times, okay? Um, it just it's just a round mental, you know, in the back of your head, making sure that you think uh, your math is correct. All right. So um, with that, I'm going. I'm done with 6-59, and I'll pick up with 6-61 in the next video.